What's up? Today you're going to learn a simple and universal opening that you can play as black primarily against the white's queen pawn move pawn to d4, but it also works if white plays pawn to c4 or knight to f3 or virtually any move except for pawn to e4. So that this is the opening for the closed openings, which comes out of the first move pawn to d4. And this opening is simple, you will be able to start using it right after watching this video. We go here for knight to f6, and after they continue with pawn to c4 to gain a space advantage in the center, you continue with pawn to g6 going into the king's Indian defense. And if you never played it, don't worry, because I'm not going to show you the main lines, which are indeed complicated. I'm gonna show you one very interesting sideline, which is not very known, but it's also very simple to learn, and that's why lots of my students actually enjoyed it a lot and got great results with it. Here's the thing. After white plays pawn to e4 to get this beautiful pawn center, first you need to play the move pawn to d6, because after white advance their pawn to e4, they're ready to possibly push it forward to e5 and to disturb your knight. And therefore, so that you don't have to you know, worry about that or calculate those lines, you can take a simple approach and just stop it from happening. Uh, your pawns will unlikely to push their pawn to e5 in this case, but just for the second, let me show you what could happen in this case. Then you just trade pawns, and after that you trade queens, which is also something unfavorable for white, as now they would have to either move their knight backwards to a more passive position, or move their king, and either way, let's say in this case, after knight g4, white is just losing. Here the knight attacks this pawn on f2, as well as the pawn on e5. Therefore, this early attack in this case certainly does not work for white. Let's come back to the main line. It's actually worth remembering this black setup of having these pawns on d6 and fee and cat win your kingside bishop as you're going to play this against almost any moves of white. It doesn't really matter for you. And that's a good thing about this opening is its is simplicity. And the other good thing about playing the king's Indian defense is that once you created this fianchettoed bishop on the king side and layer your castle, your king is just rock solid there. It is surrounded by its pawns and, light and minor pieces and white can almost never attack your king. So that's a very good thing for you because you can never have to worry about the king's safety. Let's continue with the line here. White goes knight to f3 as white needs to develop their pieces. Then you simply castle putting your king to safety. And white would also need to continue their development and they play bishop e2 here in this position, which is the main line and most of your opponents will play just this move. Uh, just to make a quick note here, in case white plays bishop d3 instead, it's actually a worse move as it breaks the connection between the queen and this pawn on d4. And this d4 pawn is going to become a target for black within the next moves. Therefore, if they play this inferior move, bishop to d3, you're going to use the same plan and it's going to work even better than in the main line. So let's just simply come back to the main line as your plan will remain to be the same. Here we go, bishop g4. What's the point of this move? That is the plan which I was about to share with you and this less known line which gives you great results. In the main lines of the king's Indian defense here black goes pawn to e5 or knight to c6, maybe knight to d7 and it leads to a very complicated game. But this plan which starts off with the move bishop g4 is very straightforward, very logical and easy to learn. The black's idea, the black's long-term plan is to take aim at this white's pawn on d4, even though it looks like it's well protected at the moment, but the point here is that the white's adjoining pawns cannot move backwards, so white can never protect this pawn with another pawn, and therefore it's gonna be a long-term weakness for white. Also, black has this monster bishop on g7, which can always put pressure onto this pawn, and you can support it with your knights or pawns. And that is why Black just played bishop to g4, as the white's pawn on d4 is mostly protected by the white's knight from f3. So if you can uh, trade off this knight, you eliminate the main defender, and after that it's going to become easier for you to put more pressure onto the white's central pawn. So if white castles, you then play another mysterious move, knight going to d7, which seems like a meaningless move, just moving your knight backwards, but in fact it opens up the bishop diagonal, so the bishop starts targeting the pawn. Now, what can white do? Let's say they play pawn to h3, very natural looking move. 
It's the move which a lot of your pawns will play, as generally speaking, in a game of chess, it's usually a good idea for white to play h3 in a similar situations. But right now, it's actually a mistake, because remember, you were going to trade off this knight most likely anyway at some point, and therefore, white playing this move only help you realize your plan, but certainly they will not realize it. So here you can trade the knight, and then play knight to c6. And now you can already see that your plan starts to become real. Pawn on d4 has been attacked by the knight and the bishop, and white already has to take some measures to defend it. And it's actually a good sign that, being black, you start attacking that early in the game, and now white starts to be a defender and has to find the right way to save their position. How can white protect their pawn on d4? Well, either they can push it forward, or they can protect it by the bishop. And we're gonna analyze both of the lines, they often lead to the same position anyway. Let's say they play pawn on d5, an aggressively looking move, which in fact is not really an attack, because your knight is not gonna retreat, it's gonna go forward, knight to d4. Even though you didn't capture the white's pawn on d4, you managed to place your knight on this strong central position, which is a great achievement for black, as this knight is gonna be an annoying piece for white, and white would probably wish to play bishop e3, trying to drive it away or force you to take here on f3. But you don't want to do that, as instead of just exchanging it, you can fix it there by playing pawn to e5, so that you still can maintain this knight there, or if white decides to trade it off, you'll have a strong pawn on the same square d4. White will very likely get bothered with your intruder on d4 and decide to trade it off by taking it with a bishop and then playing knight to e2, and at this point your pawn will probably be happy, thinking that, hey, not only I managed to eliminate that knight, but now, how can he protect that pawn on d4? Right, I'm attacking it with a knight and queen, and it lo just looks so good for me. In this position, in fact, it's not really dangerous for black, as, first of all, if you wish to keep the pawn there, you can just play queen to f6 and provide additional protection for the pawn in your position is just great. But there is another line, which is even trickier. You may play pawn to d3, seemingly trying to trade pawns, as after white captures the pawn, you can capture the white pawn on b2. But at this point, white will think, okay, I got him anyway, because now I can move my rook to b1, and on the next move, once the bishop goes away, I'll win that pawn on b7, so anyway, I'll win my troll. And once they're happy with this outcome, thinking that they tricked you that way, you just move your bishop back, and after they capture the pawn, you go knight c5, with a double attack to the white's queen and rook, thus winning the game. It's a very popular trap, meaning that lots of players are unaware of it, and get right into it, thinking that they got you, thinking that they like, calculated this line better, but as a result, they just lose here right away. As I mentioned previously, you are welcome to use the same setup against different white's moves, such as pawn to c4, or pawn to d4, or knight to f3. All kinds of moves will still lead to the same position for you. Let's say they're trying this English opening against you. You're still going knight of 6 and fincato your kingside bishop. And let's say instead of pawn to e4, immediately they first play knight to f3, then you castle, and they would still have to push this pawn forward to get some control in the center and also to open up this bishop. Sooner or later they will play it, and then you play pawn to d6, put in this main setup of the king's Indian defense, as you can see with some transposition it comes to the same position. Now it goes bishop e2, you respond with bishop g4 to put pressure onto this knight, which protects the key square, the key pawn on d4, which will be your long-term target. Now white castles, and you play knight f to d7 to open up this bishop. Let's say they play pawn to h3, you trade this bishop here, and after that you go knight c6, attacking this pawn with your knight and bishop. In the previous example, we analyzed the white moving their pawn forward to d5, and then you just jump with your knight forward, get in a great position. What if instead they protect this pawn by playing bishop to e3? Then you keep attacking the white central pawn in a similar way, you still play pawn to e5 to attack this key pawn on d4, and as they move, push it forward, you still penetrate onto d4, getting into the exact same position we analyzed previously. If you remember, we analyzed that taking here on d4 does not let white win this pawn, it's quite the contrary, you're getting a great position there. There, Therefore, this little transposition does not change anything. Now, let's take a move back, and I'll show you one more line, which can possibly happen here. 
let me take a few moves back here. Okay, so we see that bishop e3 does not change much. Let's say they still play pawn to d5, you go knight to d4, they attack the knight and you support it with a pawn. Another option for white, in addition to trying to take here on d4 and win the pawn, would be to take on passant here, d takes a6. What are you going to do in this case? Well, since now your knight has been attacked, you need to first of all trade it with check, making this intermediate exchange, and after that you recapture the pawn. And now it's the end of the force in line and we can just validate the position. And you've got a good position. You have here a semi-open file for your rook. You've got this great diagonal for your bishop. Your knight can jump to e5 and possibly attack here the queen, the pawn. Overall, you're getting a great game. It's not that you're winning here, of course, but you've got a very comfortable position and it's a great outcome for black for this opening line. And finally, let me show you the strongest variation for white, so that even if you come across a really well-prepared, strong opponent, you still know what to do. And I've got some sudden line for you here just as well. In this game, white played first move knight to f3, and as we know, you can still follow up with your traditional setup. If you can kind of win your kingside bishop, here white played pawn to e4, you can see that the move order is slightly different in this case, but it still came to the same position we're analyzing. Bishop e2, bishop goes to g4, white castles, knight to d7. Now, in this game, white played bishop e3, and this is the right way for white, as white anticipates you attacking this pawn, and therefore white aims to protect it in advance. Black goes knight to c6, and we know that in this position, black is ready to start the massive attack of this pawn. Black can possibly trade here, then push the pawn to e5, and then this pawn will actually become vulnerable and it is very likely that you'll be able to land your knight there, getting a dominating position in the center. Therefore, to break the black's plan, white needs to push his own pawn forward here to d5, trying to, you know, somehow do something in between of your plans so that you don't have the time to do all that. In this case, definitely need to be prepared, and here's what you can do. I've got some sudden line for you here as well. So first you can trade here this knight. You see that in most of the lines, sooner or later you will need to actually trade it. And then you have a sudden idea. A knight goes to a5. Normally, it is not recommended to put your knight on the edge of the board, but in this case, it does a good job here by attacking this pawn on c4. And it works together with this fiancato bishop really well, as white can never push the b3 pawn forward because they will lose the, their knight on c3. So that's how these two pieces work together really well. And that's why knight a5 in this particular case makes sense. Now, how can white possibly protect their c4 pawn, which has been attacked by the knight? Well, there aren't that many options. Let's say they go bishop e2 to protect it that way. Uh, just to give you an idea, it can't be protected with a queen that easily because then you can jump with your knight here, attacking everything. So that would definitely be in favor of black. Let's take him back. Let's say they protect it with the bishop, then you attack it once more with the other knight from b6. Now you've got two attackers, so once again white has to do something about that. A lot of your opponents will play the move pawn to c5, which is actually a bad move in reality, because then instead of exchanging here on c5, you would jump with your knight to c4, attacking the bishop, attacking this pawn, and always we've got this extremely powerful bishop, exerting strong pressure and attacking everything along this diagonal. You're gonna win a couple games just like this, guaranteed. Let's say your opponent will play something like bishop d4, trying to close the line, then you can win this pawn on b2, and you can keep chasing the white's queen, and after these trades, and you're, you're just winning the pawn for nothing, and you keep attacking, you've got this strong bishop and an extra pawn, so that is technically winning for black. Of course, it can't be all that bad for white, there must be some good line for white. Here it is. So after they push the pawn to d5, you trade here on f3, you go knight a5, still attacking this pawn on c4, they protect it with the bishop, and then you go knight to b6 to attack this pawn once again. They probably get a trade here on b6. And then you play another out-of-the-box move, c takes b6. Usually the classical books teach you to take towards the center, not away from the center, like such as in this case, but it has the point. You're opening up the c-file for your rook, and there, together with the knight, it will keep attacking this pawn on c4. And then on the next move, let's say white does something, let me play some random move here. And if you play rook to c8, you can clearly see the black's idea. The c4 pawn being attacked with the knight, with the rook, white still can never push their pawn forward, because this knight is hanging. 
And uh, you can just see that it's not that easy for white to figure out what to do here. And in the future, you can keep pressuring it even more. You can prepare some undermine with these pawns on the queen side, or you can undermine the white center right here. Even though the position is okay for white, definitely. Um, and the previous move of white probably should have been different. But anyway, I mean, the position is playable, and especially in Blitz games, you, you've got an active game here, and you will also have a great chance of surprising your opponent, because most of your opponents will not be prepared. It is a sideline, not very known. And, you, and also you can see that you have a lot of tricks and uh, along the way. Therefore, you have many chances to win the games against an opponent who is not that well prepared. Finally, here's a quick puzzle for you where black managed to also use the power of their dark square bishop with a somewhat little bit similar pawn structure. It's black to move. Please think about it. And if you can solve it, write the solution in the comments down below. Also, if you want to know how my students managed to become title players, the world amateur champion, the state champion uh, in the US, etc., then you may watch my free masterclass by clicking the link in the description. Best of luck in your chess battles.